The giant Pacific octopus is the largest octopus in the world. But get this, it's also one of the smartest. Most of the time, you'll never see them. They're hidden in rocky dens along BC's rugged coast. But here's the twist. Their real power isn't just being a predator. It's the role they play in keeping kelp forests alive. Hey adventurers and welcome back to BC Adventures. I'm Ryan Swan and today we're going back to Velma's Rocks in Sioux, BC. Typically a great spot to see octopus and since I started doing BC Adventures, I haven't had a really good octopus dive out here in the Otter Point area. I mean 7751, you know, has been a dive site that I've been diving for years and usually if it was a few years ago it was an excellent place to see octopus but lately there hasn't been many octopus there. You can notice I am parked in a different spot. I didn't want to park over there the last time I was there. Um, the newspaper guy got mad at me for blocking the mailboxes. So politely, I have parked over here. And today, I'm hoping to find an octopus. I got my lucky octopus shirt on. We're hoping to find some GPOs under the sea. In this episode, we're back at Velma's Rocks in Souk, BC, a site I know well, reef, current, and one of the biggest kelp forests in the area. Therefore, it's the perfect place to look for a giant Pacific octopus and to understand why they're so important to the balance of our kelp forests. To understand why the octopus matters, you first need to know the forest itself. Bull kelp, Nereocystis, it's like an underwater tree it can grow up to 30 meters long, weaving together canopies that shelter fish, crabs, and hundreds of other species. But like any forest, it needs balance. Without predators, grazers like crabs and urchins can overrun the reef. Therefore, something has to keep them in check, and that's where the octopus comes in. As I swam deeper, the kelp thickened. Tube snouts darted between the stipes, every stem alive with movement schools of fish swirling around us. This place is bursting with life. But then, something caught my eye. It was the line we set last winter. I knew it was there, but now it was almost gone, swallowed by the kelp. The bull kelp clung to the reef with its holdfasts, gripping the rock, pulling and twisting until, by autumn, all of it will be knotted together in one giant rope of living kelp. Out of the green haze, a shape drifted, a fried egg jellyfish caught in the kelp. Quinn carefully pulled the strands aside so we could see it better, but this just wasn't any jelly. It was one of the biggest we'd ever seen. Its long stinging tentacles a reminder that here, everything is connected, predator and prey. But to get the full story, we had to dive deeper. The reef was calling. First clue, an octopus den. Crab shells piled high at the entrance. Another den, and then another den. But the octopus themselves, they stay tucked away, comfortable in their homes. I counted six active dens on this dive. So I kept moving, not disturbing them too much. Just a few clips, but enough to see the evidence. And what evidence it was? These clam graveyards weren't just leftovers. They were micro habitats, small worlds for shrimp, snails, and even self and sculpins. In their own way, octopus have shaped the reef. But if there were this many dens, I couldn't help but wonder, what if one of them was out hunting? I had a good feeling something was about to happen. And then it appeared, a giant Pacific octopus out in the open, the largest octopus on Earth. But what makes them vital here isn't just their size, it's their role in the kelp forest. They hunt crabs, clams, and sometimes even sea urchins. Grazers, if left unchecked, could strip these forests bare. Therefore, every time an octopus feeds, it's keeping this ecosystem alive. Just like sea otters and sunflower sea stars. But with their populations in decline, urchins have exploded, tearing down kelp forests all across the Pacific Northwest. Therefore, without the octopus, we risk the same collapse here. And it goes deeper. 
Their dens recycle nutrients. The leftovers create homes. And when their short life ends, they become food themselves for fish, sea lions, and even other octopus. Watching one crawl across the reef feels like watching the heartbeat of the kelp forest itself. It crawls, it pauses, it changes, and suddenly it's gone. On the way out, we drifted through a tunnel of kelp, a canopy overhead, the light flickering green and gold, a living cathedral built from sunlight and tide. But every cathedral needs its guardians. Belma's rocks delivered again, a dive packed with life and proof that the giant Pacific octopus isn't just mysterious, it's essential. They're guardians of the kelp forest. Without them, this world would look very different. Sea otters and sunflower sea stars play a critical role in keeping sea urchin populations in check, which help protect the health of our kelp forests. With both species in decline, sea otters in some regions, due to past hunting and ongoing pressures, and sunflower sea stars from sea star wasting disease, urchin populations have expanded in many areas, overgrazing and damaging these vital habitats. Giant Pacific octopus are not currently in decline, but if their balance were disrupted, the prey they regulate could surge if left unchecked. That wouldn't just affect our kelp forests, it could ripple across many marine habitats throughout the Pacific Northwest. Clams, for example, make up a huge part of their diet and unchecked clam populations could alter seafloor ecosystems. Human activity continues to be a major factor in shaping species balance and environmental health. The ocean thrives in harmony, and when even one piece of the puzzle is removed or altered, the ripple effects can be profound. If you want to explore more kelp forests in Souk, check out my episode on the Souk Bluffs, where we found rare giant kelp, Macrocystis, one of the only places on Vancouver Island you can see it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time when we take a deep dive on BC Adventures.